Welcome to Cell-Based Assays for Enhanced Safety, Activity, and Target Specificity Determination. I'm Tamlin Oliver, Managing Editor of Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News, and I'll be the moderator for this webinar. Given the importance of small molecule therapeutics in the treatment of several disease classes, increased focus has been placed on the development of robust assays to improve identification of safe, active, and specific compounds. Unfortunately, during the kinase drug discovery and development process, early identification of potential toxicities and off-target effects has proven challenging and physiologically relevant assays that can accurately correlate kinase in vitro and cellular functional activities has been lacking. The two speakers in this webinar, Karen Leach, Associate Research Fellow at Pfizer, and Vincent Dupre, Principal Scientist at Perkin Elmer, will discuss new cell-based assay platforms that provide a solution to this problem. Karen will kick off the presentations, but before I pass the microphone to her, I want to encourage you to submit questions for our panelists. We'll answer as many as we can after the final presentations. All right, Karen, we're ready for you now. Great. Thank you, Tamlin. What I'd like to do is tell you today about a collaborative project that we've had with Perkin Elmer where we were developing some cellular kinase assays um, to utilize for our drug discovery process. And the Pfizer team that I was working with, uh, besides myself, was Julia Guzova and Victoria Wong. In addition, from the Perkin Elmer side, we worked with Malathy, Sayamurthy, and Rajneesh. Um, in addition, though, they had many um, wonderful people who were working at the bench to both validate and develop these assays, and I want to thank them as well. So in our next slide, um, really set gauge for what the problem statement is for us, and that has to do with attrition analysis. So uh, this is a slide with two pie graphs from a review article that Jim McKim wrote in 2010, looking at the major causes of attrition. And what you can see is that for the area uh, or the time span of 1964 to 85, that uh, the issue about human PK was almost 40% of, of the attrition. In addition, uh, animal toxicity and human adverse events turned out to be around 20%. Now, in the intervening years then up to 2000 on the lower pie graph is the fact that we brought online a number of uh, in vitro assays that were really helping in the PK and ADME area to both uh, de-risk compounds and also PKPD modeling. However, in that same time span, as you can see in the year 2000, we still have human adverse events of 11%, animal toxicity of 20, so not much changed um, in the safety attrition area. Uh, so it continues to be a major factor. And of course, in order for us to try to continue to, to deliver new therapies um, that are more safe and, and uh, uh, in a cost-efficient manner, then we have to continue to develop new tools. So what are 